Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to 3D camera track a tripod shot in Blender. Click the link below to download this exact footage if you want to follow along in this tutorial. So I've got the motion tracking tab open. I'm going to import my footage. So I'm going to click open and I'm going to navigate to where I have my footage stored and I'm going to import an image sequence. So what you can do is just select the first image in the image sequence and select open clip and Blender will automatically load in the image sequence. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on set scene frames and then to load everything into my RAM, I'm going to select prefetch. Nice. To start off with, I'm going to select normalize. Then I'm going to click on detect features. I'm going to click this drop 12 down button right here and I'm going to set the distance to 60. I'm going to set the margin to 32 and I want to track forward. So I'm going to press control T to track forwards. Perfect. With all my tracking markers selected, I'm going to press control L to lock all of my tracking markers. Then I'm going to select detect features again and I'm happy with that. And I'm going to press shift control T to track backwards. And I'm going to press Control L to lock all these tracks. Next, I'm going to go to frame, say 180. And again, I'm going to select the tech features and I'm going to press Control T to track forwards. Nice. And I'm going to go back again to about frame 180, 186. And I'm going to press Shift Control T to track backwards again. Nice. And I'm going to press Control L to lock the markers. Now that that's done, I'm going to click on Solve. Because it's a tripod track, because the camera's not moving in 3D space, it's only panning and tilting. I'm going to select tripod. I'm going to select keyframe. Under refine, I'm going to select focal length, optical center, and radial distort. And as I go through my footage, I'm going to go from keyframe 90 to keyframe 300. 90 to 300. Lovely. And lastly, I'm going to click on clean up. I'm going to select filter tracks. And as you can see, it's identified 63 problematic tracks. So I'm going to hold my mouse over the clip and I'm going to press X and click on delete track. And I'm going to press solve camera motion. And we've got a camera solve of 0.31 pixels, which is absolutely fantastic. Next thing I want to do to define the floor, I'm going to find a point on the ground right here and I'm going to track it manually. I'm going to take this point right here. So I'm going to zoom in on it. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and I'm going to click to bring up a tracking marker. I'm going to press Alt S to bring up the search and I'm going to move it right over here. I'm going to come over to track just so I can see where my tracking point is. So as you can see, if I move my tracking point, if you look under track, the yellow marker is moving. So I want to track this white thing on the floor right here. So I'm just going to increase my tracking search area and I'm going to press L to lock it into place. And I'm going to press shift control T to track backwards. To move one frame to the left or right, just press left or right arrow on your keyboard. The track is going off camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to frame 56 and press control T to track forwards. Perfect. Press control L to lock it in place. Then I'm going to go back to the frame where it stops and I'm going to find another track on the floor. Let's see if it will track this over here. Press control, click, click inside the box to move it. Nice, I'm going to press shift control T to track backwards and that's perfect. Press control L to lock the track. Nice. I'm going to click on solve camera motion again and a track of 0 0.70. If I click on this track here, you can see on the right, it has an average track error of 1.3 pixel. Now you want a track where you have an error of less than one pixel. So to resolve that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the weight of this track and I'm going to go to the other track on the floor, which we just tracked. I'm going to select it and it has an average of 2.96. So I'm going to decrease the weight of this track as well. I'm going to click solve camera motion again and we have a track of 0.42. Perfect. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this track over here and I'm going to click on set origin. Nice. Now that that's done, I'm going to go back into my layout tab. I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to go into the object constraint properties, add an object constraint while my camera is selected. Select on camera solver. And if I was to press play now, you'll see that our camera's moving. So we've just taken the track data and we've added it to the camera. Now to get the background image, select camera, go to background images, select it, click on add image, select movie clip, click this button down here and select the clip that we have. 
just gonna close this window to my left by selecting over here and dragging to the right. And I'm gonna press zero on my numpad to go into the camera view. And you can see that we have our footage as our background image. I'm gonna press shift A, mesh, plane. And we have our plane, I'm gonna press play to see that it's looking solid on the floor. So I'm going to change the orientation a bit. So with my camera selected, I'm gonna come over to the transform pivot point. I'm gonna select 3D cursor. I'm gonna press R for rotate and I wanna have the X axis going across and I wanna have the Y axis going to and from, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna move this, the camera right here. I want the X axis to go across. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And I'm gonna rotate on the X just to line it up with the floor. And I think that lines up decent, nice, brilliant. I'm gonna change it back. So I'm gonna select this and select bounding box center. And I'm gonna increase the scale of the plane on the floor. And I'm just gonna move it over like so. And I'm gonna move this back over here. And I'm gonna increase the scale again. And I'm gonna press play to see that it's tracking properly within the scene it looks like it's tracking nice if you want to see the tracking markers that we've set then that's easy just come over to here select this drop down button and click on motion tracking brilliant so i want to set this as a shadow catcher i'm going to select it come over to object properties click on visibility and select shadow catcher then i'm going to press shift a mesh to add a cube i'm going to come back out of my camera and i'm just going to place the cube in, in the middle of the plane so I move it like this like so perfect and move it up a bit i'm going to decrease the scale and i'm going to move it down a bit just so it's sitting on shadow catcher like so i'm going to go into my rendered view so i'm going to press z click on render go back into the camera and we can't see anything at the moment and that's because we need to come over to render properties select film and click on transparent once you've done that you'll see the clip through the camera again and you can pretty much see that the cube is sticking to the ground in our frame resulting in a good camera track my name's Jermaine and i'll see you again in the next one take care goodbye